Have you checked out our skits channel? Well, if you haven't, you need to check it out. Terrell fixes all skits. And there's your dinner. Pterodactyl here. Today's video is going to be on this. 1961 David Bradley Suburban. Does this look familiar? Huh, Grass Rats? We saw this at the tractor show that we went to in Valparaiso, Indiana. And it's also in our calendar, our 2024 calendar, which they're all sold out, the calendars. But this is in it. This belongs to Terrell fan Casey Raymond. And uh, this thing is hard to start. And he hasn't really done anything to it. So it runs, but you just it just you gotta pull and pull and pull to get it to start. It it should be a pooling. Because you're pooling and pooling and pooling. Get it pooling. And it's once you get it started, you don't want to shut it off because it's hard to get started again. So it has nothing done to it. So who knows if it's got the original points or another set of points that are just wore out. So the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is check the spark. So I'm gonna pull the plug out of it to make it easier to, to start. He did put a new plug in it. I mean, you can get it started. Plug's awfully black, like it's running really rich. But uh, I think it might might need a set of points, maybe a valve job, maybe both. So let's see what kind of spark it's got. Where are my spectacles? I need my spectacles. Let me find it. What did I do? That's got spark. Let me pull it out low. I don't know. It looks a little yeller. Let's take a look at the points anyway. Let me uh, get a compression tester and we'll, we'll do a compression test too. Got good compression. All right. So it's got a new plug. Spark seems, you know, decent. Wonder if it's a fuel issue. Let me clean up this plug a little bit. Take this oil bath air filter off. All right, now this is our choke and our throttle is right here. Give it like half throttle. Let's we'll see what happens. Pretty easy. 
Because I remember at the tractor show, he was pooling and pooling and pooling. And uh, finally, when he got it started, you know, it's like we didn't want to shut it off. Let me try it again. choking the air off. This thing works the opposite. You have to pull it out to start it, push it in to kill it. You would think you would pull it out and that would kill it. But it works the opposite. Put it about half throttle again. All right, well, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Well, there you have it. Fix another one. So, subscribe to the, no, 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 we're not done yet. I'm gonna take a look at them points. So we gotta pull this cover off, pull the starter clutch, pull the flywheel. It's easy to work on. You flip that hood up and everything's right there. I guess this is a battery box. So I think you could put electric starter on it. I just think not want to come apart here. Take this air horn off over here. This thing, or swing it out of the way. Get this thing out of the way. Another bolt in the back. I gotta take these two screws out so I can get this thing off, so I can kick this thing over. It's got a plate in the back here. I thought there was a flat spot on the back of this flywheel. But this one doesn't have that. Some of these flywheels got a little knock and then you can get it past there. Let me get a screwdriver.
vent tube, which is hard as a carp because it's probably the original one from 61. It's making it hard to get this blower shroud off. All right, now I got to get Mr. Heat Gun. So I'm going to have to warm up that tube, otherwise I'm going to break it, and I'm sure that tube isn't available. Mr. Heat Gun, I'm coming for you. i to warm up that vent tube. Is that enough to do it? No. Yeah, it just disintegrated. Because it's 100 years old. Well, 60. Yeah. There we go. See what I mean? got this on the back so I'm trying to fight that around here now I know on some of these brakes and scrap them they'll have like a flat spot right here but this one doesn't have it and then you can get that cover off easier now let's pull that starter pull that starter clutch off Where's my other side? Quarter inch screws here. They might still make that too. I doubt if I got one, but I'll get one. And let me get my starter clutch, removal tool, and airline. I'm going to take this starter clutch off. Here's the part number of the tool in case you're interested 19244. So this is the old starter clutch. Well, this is a new starter clutch, it looks like. They just popped the cap off. Well, you see how this extends past here? On the newer starter clutches, there's a cap on the end of here. And there's a little wick in there, which helps keep this shaft lubricated. You may have heard me talk about this before on these. If this thing gets sticky and gummy, this starter clutch will hang up on there and it'll make that high pitch squeal. So sometimes you can just take this off and clean this shaft real good and oil up that wick. But on this one, see the cap had popped off and the little wick is gone. Another thing you can do is cut this down a little bit. Cut this off. And then when you put the new starter clutch on there, you can leave that wick in there. And that wick helps to keep this thing lubricated. See, even though this is tight on there now, see this is kind of kind of hanging up on there. You never want to put any kind of grease or oil inside this part where the little balls are. They gotta they gotta rattle around and they're free. But I can tell this is kind of hanging up. You can hear it making that growling. 
So I may clean that up a little bit. Put some carp spray or something on there. And this is a cup washer. Now I gotta pop the flywheel. So let me get my flywheel removal tool. This is a Briggs removal tool. Fits on the end, it's got a piece of brass down in there. Should have a part number somewhere for it. And then you get a pry bar and a hammer. Now there's a lot of controversy about how I pop these flywheels. That I'm doing it wrong and I'm gonna run wrecking everything. But when you question them, well, how am I wrecking stuff? Then they can't they can't back up. A nonsensical claim. You're doing it wrong. That ain't how you pop a flywheel. Well, if this isn't how you pop a flywheel, then why would Briggs make a tool and show you in the manuals? I could show you countless manuals. They all have knockoff tools. Yeah, you could use a flywheel puller, but this works too. And guess what? You're not hurting nothing. What am I hurting by doing this? been doing this for over 40 years. I've never had anything come back because of the way I popped the flywheel off. Do it on chainsaws, weed eaters, everything. Oop. Spin it a little bit. Sometimes you gotta spin it. Good sharp blow, pop it right off. Okay, this thing looks like it hasn't been off in a long time. It's clean under here, it's not all dirty. We'll clean this up. Put these screws over there. And let's uh, take these points off. Take a look at them. There's my screwdriver. They look pretty dirty. Drop that little clip, a little washer. Who cares, because if I'm gonna put new points on it, you don't need them anyway. So you can see they look kind of dirty and oily right here. Oh yeah. It's probably the whole problem. Oh man, these points are shot. I'm surprised it had spark. It seemed kind of yellowy to spark. It didn't seem like it was like a hot blue. I can feel it. I don't know if you can feel it through your TV. But there's a big ridge on here. You can see where the points, they're wore down. They are wore down, way down. Here's the other end. Yeah, these points are shot. Well, let me see if I got a set of these. I got a bunch of new old stock points. Maybe I got a set. I kind of had a feeling it might be the points. All right, I got a new set of points and condenser. The points for this engine are 29667. And the condenser is 29861. Oh, I guess I had a couple sets of these points. I think these are slightly used. 
I don't know why I brought these down. They're like new. But I'm not going to use them. I'm going to use these. New old stock points. They still make these. So here's a brand new set of them points. Now the condenser looks slightly different. The new one than the old one. And it's much wear on those old points. Yeah, this looks like the original condenser. This says 292677 on it. That would be amazing if these were the original points. You would think at some point they would have changed them. I can remember changing points all the time when I worked at my brother Farrell's. Uh, push mowers and that so you think oh another thing I need to change is that I, need, I forgot to grab a points plunger Dang damn it Dropping everything here Yeah, look at this This points I'm surprised there wasn't a bunch of oil coming up through there. This thing's all sludged up. All sticky. Lack of maintenance. Bet the inside of this motor is real dirty. All right, let me get a new plunger, too. I forgot to grab one of them. Then I can stick this other set of points up there. I'll be right back. I got a new points plunger. Part number 65704. And it's got a little groove on one end of it. And that's the part that goes up. That's what the little groove is for, to tell you which way it goes in. Groove up. Now this, this hole is a little war. It should be all right. Now I've got the tool to ream that out and put a bushing in there. The problem is to do it correctly, you have to take the crankshaft out so you can get the reamer and the drill all the way through. You can do it on the engine. You have to take the coil off and then you would ream it and you have to cut the bushing down because you're going to put the bushing in there and uh, since you couldn't go all the way through with the crankshaft in there you would have to chop some of it off or grind it flat drive it in so far and drive it flat but this one's marginal it's a little sloppy I've seen them worse where you got to change it because all it'll do is puke a bunch of oil up in this area and it'll just fill this whole thing with oil this one's not bad it's a little sloppy but it's not terrible we can we can get by we can get by without changing it see the new condenser is a lot shorter a little more compact it's got two little two little nubs that stick out and it goes on I'm sure it's gluten tight that's what my German friends say, guten tight. All right, and then that'll go up into the new set of points. So we'll put the points on. There's a little pin back here. It fits over. So it'll pivot off of there. These are a little different. They make about three or four different sets of points I think three breaks and scrap them so we'll just snug that up for now is our wire gonna reach uh-oh uh-oh 
This is the wrong condenser. Hmm, this must be for a smaller engine. Let me go up there and look. Maybe I got another one. This one was laying loose in the box. All right, I went back up there and got the new one out of the bag. Somebody must have cut that wire on that other one because it was just laying loose in the box. So that's why I grabbed it because it was out of the package. I just thought, well, I'll just use that one. And then, of course, the wire was a little bit short. So I think somebody cut the wire. That came from a bunch of parts. I think somebody had given me. See, this one's plenty long. Alright. Take that off. Got to kind of be careful. Okay. This one wire has got... An eyelid, it looks like somebody might have soldered on there. I don't think that's factory. Because generally, you just loosen the screw. And then you just shove the wires in behind that. Again, this could be the original coil and everything on it. And maybe that's what they did. Generally, you would just loosen this screw and then this little this little forked piece. Let me show you on the other one so you could see it better. See, so you got this little part here. And you just loosen it and you tuck the wires in behind here. And then you just tighten the screw. You don't even have to take the screw all the way out. Let me inspect this wire here. This is our kill wire. Is that thing loosened up enough? Oh, I can get it behind there. There we go. And then put the condenser wire in there. I'm going to put one on this side and one on that side. And then you tighten her down. Making sure you don't get the insulation of the wire stuck behind there, because then you're not going to have any, you're not going to have a connection if you got the insulation. So you got to make sure the insulation of the, like this one here, just want to shove it up in there. So make sure the insulation of the wire isn't stuck behind there because that'll make for a bad day. You'll be wondering, well, I ain't got no spark. I still got no spark, Terrell. Because your knucklehead got the insulation stuck behind there. And be careful not to tighten it too tight because this thing is only that phenolic, whatever they call that stuff. And you could break this off and then you just ruin the points. What do they got here? This is that glue they like put on there back in the day. I'm going to pull some of that away. And we'll tuck our wire back in there. Look at all this crud back in here. All right. So now we got that done. So now we got to set the points, 20 thousandths. So I'm gonna snug it there. Want the points? Want to turn it till they open and close? Should have left the plug out. Loosen that up some. I don't think it's hitting the plunger. Let's do that. Let's put a little tension on it. Alright. I'm going to pull this plug out. So I can turn it easier. There 
There we go. There we go. Now they're opening and closing. Had to open them up a little. So right there, key lined up with the with the plunger. When I turn it, see they open and close. We want them open. Get a twenty thousandths feeler gauge and a piece of paper. Maybe you remember this too, Grass Rats, but back in the day they used to give you a little feeler gauge like this with a lot of the points. I remember there were hundreds of these things laying around and I never saved any of them. I wish I would have saved them. This one says 25,000. I found this in a set of parts, in a box of parts that somebody had given me. And I thought, man, too bad it wasn't a 20,000. But it's a 25, but you remember this? They used to give you this little feeler gauge with with the points. Now I got this one that I kind of customized myself to make it make it work. We'll stick that in there. Tighten it down. Make sure we got a good little drag on it at 20 thousandths. Then we'll turn it, make sure they close. And they do close. Get a piece of paper or a business card because you want to clean them. So you got them in the closed position. And you want to rub that in there. And you don't want to pull it out because sometimes it'll grab the end of the piece of paper and tear it off and you'll have a piece of paper stuck in the gap. And again, you'll not have spark. So you kind of want to wiggle it and either lift it or rotate it till they're open again. And then I always like to give them a little snap. Make sure they're getting good contact. All right, now we can put the points cover back on. I'm gonna clean this cover first, and then I'll put it back on. So a lot of these points, because they're stored for a long time, they put a protective coating on the, on the contacts. So you have to clean that protective coating off sometimes. So sometimes you gotta spray it with carb spray or carb cleaner because if you don't that protective coating you're not going to get any spark so you got to clean that off of there sometimes brake cleaner or carb spray will, will take it off and then you use the paper too to, to help clean them all right so i clean the cover and it goes on this way it's got that little bump out there that's where the wires go through it's got that little bump there for that and this little bump for this because you can't put it on the other way which is the wrong way Now, I'll put some silicone on there because they had that other sealant on there. So I always like to put a little dab of silicone on there, but I gotta clean this it's all nasty back here. So I wanna clean some of that away. And I'll put some silicone on there. It's all cleaned up, so now I'm gonna seal this up a little bit. And I'm gonna put some black silicone on there with our tube gripper. This is a nifty little tool if you don't have one. It'll squeeze every ounce out of that tube. Plus it gives you control. And we sell these in our online store and we sell the silicone. We got black and silver or gray silicone. So let me put a dollop. A silicone on there
to seal up, keep from any moisture or dirt or anything getting in there. All right, so now we're ready to put the flywheel and the flywheel key and everything and reassemble it. Let's see what kind of spark we got now. Here's the key. Where'd that keyway dang have it? It's over here. There we go. And then our washer. This washer is cupped. It's a cupped washer. So you want the cup part of it on the outside because it acts like, you know, put spring tension on there. And then I wanted to clean this. Get some carb spray. Where is that stuff? There's a can. There, that's better. Make sure that's nice and... Oh yeah, that spins a lot easier. I'm gonna make sure this is tight, but not crazy tight. Otherwise, the key will shear if it ain't tight enough. That should be good. And that spins good. Put my spark tester back on here. Make sure we got a good ground. We don't want that touching anywhere. Now I'll rock this back and forth. Should spark. Oh. Oh, dummy. Let's turn the switch on. It's not sparking. Why isn't it sparking? Should be able to rock it back and forth and it'll spark. Boy, this thing is. Recoil is starting to stick now. It's sparking. Uh oh. I didn't have the screen on there. The screen helps hold this thing together. Now it fall apart on me, all the little balls fell out. Ugh. Knucklehead, Carol. Yeah, you gotta have the screen on there. Alright, let me take it back off, put it back together. Alright, there's this little, like, fiber or plastic washer that goes in there. 
and then there's this, and then you drop the balls in each one of these little compartments here. Six balls. I've seen where people put grease in there, and then they wonder why it doesn't work. I go, because you're not supposed to put grease in there. And then when you put the screen on or you put a couple of screws in there, that helps hold this flange on. So that's what happened. I didn't have a couple of them screws in here. That's why that thing popped apart on me. Now you got to see inside there. So don't freak out if that happens to you. Alright, now we can tighten it back down and I'm going to lubricate that recoil. There we go. Alright, where's that recoil at? Yeah, this thing is hanging up. Probably hasn't been lubricated since 1961. So I'm gonna put our gel lube in there, which we also sell in our online store. It's a good lubricant. Works on other stuff. You can use it as an assembly lube when you're assembling engines. And I've lubricated locks and cables and all kinds of stuff. It's sticky, so it sticks the to the metal. Look, I just sprayed some in there and look, it's already starting to... And all I did was spray it in that spring compartment. And it's already starting to retract on its own. Plus, this thing's got that spring down in there. Right? There's a little cup with a spring in there. So the end of the starter clutch pushes on that. And it kind of helps. Release it. I'm going to take a scraper here. Scrape some of this nastiness out of this blower shroud while I'm in here. But I was just testing for spark. I was just temporarily putting this on there. I know what you're going to say why it wasn't sparking when I was rocking it back and forth. It's because I didn't clean the magnet. You didn't clean the magnets, Daryl. You got to shine them magnets up so you can get hot spark. So a few years ago, because every year I've got to take an exam because I'm a Briggs dealer, so you have to take their test. And a few years ago I took one of their tests and... In the test, it asked if cleaning these magnets made a difference. And according to them, now this is brakes and scrapple. According to them, that doesn't make a difference. That has no effect on the spark if them are dirty or clean. But my theory on that is it does have a little bit of an effect because if it's rusty, it usually is sitting up a little higher and you might lose your your gap, your ten thousandths gap between here. But a lot of people like to clean them anyway. So I'm going to clean them. Take a piece of sandpaper and clean these magnets up a little bit. But if you're going to clean the magnets, well then you should also clean the laminates on the coil. So usually when you rock it back and forth like this, it should jump the gap.
because you're opening and closing the points right there. Maybe it's not tight enough because usually when I do that it it jumps it. I got a good ground. But it's not. Alright. I'm going to put this screen on, put that blower shroud back on. Green is a mess. Now I got to get a hammer. Close up them holes a little bit. Oh, it doesn't look like it's doing anything. Most of this screen is kind of broken out. I don't think I got another one. A little bubbled out, it's a little distorted. All right, let's put this back in it now. Maybe the coil's weak. It's got the original coil on it. What's going on with this recoil now? There we go. We gotta find that sweet spot. We put the bolts in. Probably my problem. I don't have the bolts in it. Now another option on this, for you grass rats that don't know, is I could have converted this to electronic ignition. And I could have eliminated the points, the condenser, got rid of that old coil, and put a electronic ignition coil on it that Briggs makes. Part number 398811. That's, you can get it aftermarket for cheaper than the Briggs one. But all you'd have to simply do, or I could have done, uh, was just pull the blower shroud off, took the coil off, the wires that are running behind the flywheel, I could have just simply cut them and just left everything underneath the flywheel, left it all under there, could have left these old points, condenser, under there, set my air gap, 10 thousandths, and bolted the new coil on and ran the coil wire through here and I would have had electronic ignition, I would have had a whole new ignition, I could have done that, 
And then the only other thing I would have had to do was just connect the kill wire that I would have cut. I would have just had to crimp an end on it and plug it on the back of the coil. It been done and now I would have had modern electronic ignition. But we want to keep this original as, as much as we can. So we want to keep the original ignition in it. All right, so now we got to, you know, if there is a problem, say the coil does go bad on this thing, then Casey could always just put an electronic ignition coil on it and just eliminate all that. So now I got this bolted back on and now the recoil works like it's supposed to because it was all a matter of I didn't have it lined up. That's why it's important to have the bolts where they need to be. And let's take a look and see what kind of spark we got now. See, we got a hotter spark and it looks a lot bluer where the other one was more yeller. So when you got that yeller looking spark, that means you got bad spark. Put the plug back in. I'll have to look up that. This vent tube that broke. See about getting a new one. Put these two screws back in here before we start it. And it should start a lot easier. So it doesn't need a valve job because it's got plenty of compression. Just needed a set of points condenser. And now it's gonna need a new vent tube. I done, I done broke that old one off. I gotta put this bolt back in too for the air cleaner. Put this nut back in over here. Should have grabbed my ratchet wrench. Geez, how long is that thing? There's our dinner. See how this thing starts. It was starting pretty easy before, but I think when it got hot was the problem. This is our choke, which I see Casey must not have any of his gel lube. Even though he watches the videos, he's an avid fan. You think he would have did some of the basics, like oil the choke cable. So we like to take a rag, stick it behind there, and when you spray it on the outside of this metal conduit, it should soak through. Shame on you, Casey. Switch on, give it about half the throttle. Got it choked. It's not starting. Probably flooded it. Give me this 
thing with any gas in it. Oh yeah, full of gas. Get a full choke, I think. Let's see if we're getting full choke. That may be another problem. seem to be getting full chokage. Got one of them square nuts on the back. And another reason why it's hard to start. Gotta have full choke. Jesus, that cable. This thing hasn't been off in 63 years. There we go. Work it back and forth some. fix this cable and we'll readjust it. Where's that smaller cable? Here it is. Try this clamp open. I'm going to take my cutters. I'm going to cut that Z off the end. I'm going to pull this cable out. Now we can properly lubricate it. Here's part of the problem. It's got a bend in it right here. Got a kink. It's not all, oh yeah, it's kind of, kind of rusty in a few spots. Take a piece of sandpaper. Feel where it's kind of rusty. All right. Now I'm going to cut some of this off. Just about maybe a half, three quarters of an inch. Let me choke it manually and see how it starts. Switches out. So that may have been part of his problem too, it wasn't getting full chokage. So now that we got this out, now I can take the gel lube and spray it right through the hole here. And fill up that conduit with lubricant.
Now we can stick this back in there. some of this bend out here get it straight usually it just goes right back in there wants to be difficult Since I cut that Z off of there, there we go. I think I'm going to cut a little bit more off. About another three quarters of an inch, just to be safe. There we go. All right. Let me get the Z bender. So when you take your Z bender, you want to bend it away from you. So you want to bend it back, spin it 90 degrees, and bend it up. So that way your Z bend is right where you need it to be. Here's the hole down here. So that way it makes it easy. If you bend it the other way, then the Z's you know, going the opposite way, then it's hard to get it in there. So remember that, you always bend it back away from you and then spin it. So here we go right there. I'll put that clamp back on. Let's see here, is that a good spot for it? Here like that or should I have it like that? I think I need to have it like that. So that's all the way in, we're all the way up. Got it lined up with the hole. Let me crimp her down. Squeeze it down so it'll grab onto there. Where's that screw at? I'm gonna buff this so I can get that thing to screw in easier because it was fighting me. So I'll take it on the wire wheel and I'll buff it. Here's the nut. It's got one of them square nuts on it. I'll be right back. All right, the threads on this screw are all buggered up. I want to use the original screw, so I got me a one of these nut chasers and then I went and got a better screwdriver than that other crappy one I was using so this will chase those threads one of these die nuts they were a little boogered up oh yeah look at that much better just need a little chasing a little chasing Amy. Thread chasing Amy. You ever see that movie? About that guy chasing Amy with a thread chaser? I don't think he ever did catch her. She's fast. That hey, Amy. If you've never seen that movie, check it out. Thread chasing Amy.
Looks like we're getting full chokage now. Seems like that fan is rubbing on here too. That fan is all buggered up. I'm gonna have to look for another fan. Them holes are all buggered up. I'll find another fan and uh, put another one on there for him. All right, got it on, we got full choke. Put it at about half throttle. I don't wanna lose my little die nut. easier I just barely want to pull on it let me get this plug wire on there right needed set of points and a choke adjustment see it starts a lot easier now let's try starting it at just idle let me try not choking it or anything see what happens now that it's warmed up before it was pulling and pulling and pulling and then when it got real hot it was even harder to start what it needed that's what I told them at the uh, tractor show I said you ever put set points in it no you ever do this no you ever do that no I said well maybe that's all it needs is a good set of points a good tuna carbon treasure seems to be fine it's getting gas but yeah it wasn't getting full chokage that's important full choke and hot spark so that's all we're gonna do on this one in this video. We're gonna make another video because I gotta change the axle seal. Now if you notice, come over here Mr. Cameraman. This side has been leaking. This thing's been here a few weeks now. There's a big puddle outside on that pad. So he got me the seal. He brought me a bunch of stuff. He brought me a gasket set. But he didn't bring me that. That vent tube. Which I'm gonna look up and see if I can find it. Now I'm gonna have to hook one down. He brought me a carb kit. In case it needed the carburetor gone through. And he did find the seal. Here's a bunch of gaskets that fell out of that gasket set. Just in case I had to do a valve job. So, on this tractor, in order to get that axle to stop leaking, you got to double up the seal. So I guess the pocket on there is deep enough 
where you can put two seals in there like that. You stack them one on top of the other. So that's what we're going to do in the next video on this thing. Because I'm going to have to heat and quench to get them hubs off. Because I'm sure they're rusted on there. And there's two different size seals. So if you notice, look at this axle. Look at this hub over here. It's real big in diameter. So that's where these big seals go. And then over here, it's smaller. And that's where these little seals go. So that'll be the next video. Doing the seals. It's long enough. Just putting points in this thing and adjusting the choke. It's not as easy as you think, huh? <laughs> so, if you haven't already subscribed to this YouTube channel, if you're somebody new watching me, please subscribe. If you're already a, a subscriber, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being a subscriber and a loyal fan. Follow me with your antique tractors on Facebook and Instagram. If you're not on Facebook and Instagram, I don't care. That's your, that's your uh, prerogative. Not everybody's on Facebook and Instagram. Check out our web store. Carol fixes all. We've got the space shuttle shirts are in stock again. Pick yourself up a space shuttle shirt. It's not the space shuttle, it's the lawnmower. Just remember that. We're not flying in the moon, we're just cutting grass or riding around a tractor show or something silly. Don't take it so serious. It's just a lawnmower. Don't be so, some of you guys are just so serious out there. Gee, it's just a lawnmower. Okay? Take it easy. Lighten up. There's more to life than just lawnmower. Take it easy. Have a little fun. That's what I'm trying to make it fun. Isn't learning fun? Let's make it fun. Hi to all my little grass rats out there. I love all the little grass rats. All the families that are all brought together because of this channel. Your kids love watching the, the channel with Terrell. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! 63 year old mower! You just can't kill these old mowers. They won't die. They're still running, they're still out there. Not like that modern stuff that's already in the landfill. These are still out there. Woo! Still percolating.